It's very, very nice. Uh, I lived in, and up down in Southern California for a number of years. I grew up down there, and I lived in San Bernardino Mountains, which is a similar environment to this. So, you know, crest line stuff. So, you know, we, you know, the the, the flatlanders, and then there was a, the in the mountain people. So, so I still I moved back to the mountains. I've lived in Montana for some 20 years, and I love it there. So, if you ever get to Bozeman, you have to look me up. It's a beautiful place, and between five mountain ranges, a big wide valley, and we love it there. So I, I don't have much time because we have a special guest calling in in a very few minutes. So I'm going to move kind of fast to share some information with you and some important facts. And a lot of this might be redundant for you, but it's, it's a good foundation. Uh, did you, you, many of you probably know nutritional deficiency is the underlying cause for most diseases. And it shouldn't surprise you to know the reason they call it standard American diet because it's just that sad. It's very sad. It's seriously deficient in the primary nutrients we need for healthy brain and body functions. And it's interesting, you may not know this, but the USA being number one in pharmaceutical consumption in the world, we're 35th in the quality of global health care, and according to our own CIA, we are 51st in life expectancy now. So obviously we're not dying of a drug deficiency, okay? Uh, and, and so <laughs> the problem, I truly believe, is mineral deficiency, because this, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, uh, our minerals in our soil have depleted by 85% in the last 100 years. So if the mineral's not in the soil, guess what? It's not going to be in the food. It's not going to be in our bodies. And look at these two plants. This one on the left was fed, you know, was supplemented with vital nutrients. The one on the right was grown in nutritionally deficient soil. Which do you think would be healthier to eat? Okay, so mineral deficiency, according to Dr. Cavanaugh at Cornell University, he says there's only one major disease, and that is nutritional deficiency, and all other ailments are based on that, that we fall, to which we fall heir are directly traceable to that. In fact, Dr. Linus Pauling, many of you have heard of him, two-time Nobel laureate, said he declared nearly all disease can be traced to nutritional deficiency. I apologize for going fast, but we have someone calling in from Canada in about six minutes. And I have a lot to get through in these short six minutes. But um, the a it, believe it or not, even the AMA now says we should take nutritional supplements. So shift is happening. It's just happening very, very slow. And we know that uh, you know we are what we eat. And I want to talk for just a few minutes about the cycle of disease and disorder, and this is a, a, a very simple and profound concept developed by Dana and Autumn Stringham. And most of the time, diseases will start with nutritional deficiency. And when we're, we are, when we're nutritional deficient, it many times will cause different symptoms and behaviors, physical, mental, emotional symptoms and behaviors. And what happens when you start dealing with symptoms and behaviors? What's the next logical, logical progression? Is stress and trauma. We get a little stressed out because we're not feeling good. The old saying, worried sick, what a concept. So when we get stress and trauma, what happens? It causes digestive problems. And it's a very vicious circle because when we have digestive problems, even the food we're eating, we can't get the nutrition we need, so it exasperates nutritional de deficiency. Symptoms and behaviors get worse. Stress and trauma gets worse, digestive problems get worse, and it's really a downward spiral. And what we have figured out is a way to break that spiral, to interject that spiral. We're going to talk about that. The way we overcome that spiral is with a high-potency nutritional supplement that's been developed and proven over 17 years. And you're going to hear about that. And some of, the, some of you folks, how many folks have already tried the Empower Plus Q96? Quite a few of you, and by the way, we do have samples for all the guests, a free seven-day sample for everyone that's here. Uh, when you leave, uh, we'll be giving you a seven-day sample, so we're excited about that. So, <clears throat> mental health trends, because of the deficiency problem, back in 1972, Health Canada estimated 6% of the population had some type of mood or mental disorder. And by 2001, which was about 30 years later, the World Health Organization estimated it increased to 25% of the world population. That's like one in four. So you think about it, it's a 400% increase. It's now the number one cost in healthcare. And most people don't realize that. It's more than cancer and infectious disease and heart disease. Because when people get a mood or mental disorder, it's like a lifelong sentence. Somebody gets cancer or heart disease, they fight and win or lose. So, and, and worse yet, because people with mood and mental disorders many times become, are no longer contributors to society, they become 
a burden on society. So we have a way of reversing that trend. In the U.S., it's estimated about 68 million people out of about 300 million have some sort of diagnosable mood or mental disorder. Uh, I, you know, I, I, many of us may still be in the undiagnosed, but it's diagnosable, okay? So just because you haven't been diagnosed doesn't mean you ha don't have one. I think we all have one from time to time because it's just human nature. Sadly, I think Big Pharma <laughs> thinks that emotions aren't good. Did you know that shyness is now a mood disorder and you can get a prescription for it? What are the side effects? Yeah, it's really sad. So really, when you think about it, how many families are left untouched? By God's grace, I've got a really healthy family because I've raised my kids with alternative health, nutritional products, and organic food. But, you know, six kids, five grandkids, and one of my grandkids is an adolescent feeling his oats, and he's always in the back of the room playing with something, won't pay attention, and, and you know, and, and it's a problem. We put him on the Q96, and he went from the back of the room not paying attention to the front of the room writing answers on the board. Dramatic difference because he just wasn't getting the nutrition he needs. And he's 14, and you know he's just in at that age. According to the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, about 20% of American children have a mental disorder, and what that translates to is very sad. 20% of high school youth have been diagnosed with ADHD. Every day, 6.4 million children wake up and take an SSRI drug for breakfast. No way to start a day. No way to start a day. And I think it gets worse with age because they say that 23% of U.S. women in their 40s and 50s are taking antidepressants. The thing I found, because I lived in a healthy environment, a healthy family, until I got in this business, it was like an unspoken play. People didn't talk about it. So we're very honored. I'm going to have to answer this. Hold on a second. 